but you know what I mean. Smack, smack, smack. That's how, that's how I would describe it. It's like thud, 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 click, 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 smack, smack, smack. Let's do a side by side test and find out. Oh, actually, you know what? Maybe that's why. Hello and welcome to another Nihongo Gamer video. As you know, I've been doing a lot of testing with the new Victrix Pro FS Fight Stick, which just released as of maybe five or six days ago. And I have loved a whole lot of stuff about this stick. I love that the stick here is removable for portability. I love that you can have the colors flash on and off when you press buttons. I love the fact that you can just pull the cable straight out. I like that you can open up the back of it for easy access so you can change around the buttons. But there's one thing that I wasn't too keen on on the Victrix Pro and it's the hardness of the original button. Now I have actually changed the buttons recently for silent Sanwa buttons so they sound like this. But the original buttons that come with the Victrix are just the standard Sanwa OBSF30 buttons. And so I started looking for quieter alternatives. And that's when it was suggested to me to try these Sanwa silent buttons, which sound nice and quiet, and they don't hurt your fingers to press them as much. But I was also suggested to try out some buttons from a company called Gamer Finger. Now, Gamer Finger actually reached out to me and said, <laughs> it makes it sound like they reached out with their finger. Gamer Finger actually reached out to me and said, would you like to try some of these buttons? And I was like, actually, I was just about to order them from your store and buy them myself anyway. So please do send them. The buttons that you see here were provided by Gamer Finger. I didn't purchase them. They sent them to me for testing. And the reason is because apparently Gamer Finger buttons, and I'll show them to you now. Apparently, gamer finger buttons are not only quiet like silent buttons, but they supposedly also retain a lot of the feel and the clickiness of standard Sanwa buttons. Plus, the whole goal of these buttons is not actually to be quiet, but actually to be pers personalizable, personalizable, customizable. So what you see on these buttons down here is in fact that they've got different colored switches inside and I don't know exactly how to pull this this cap off. I've only briefly opened this up just to look and see how many buttons were in here so see I could see what kind of tests I could do but I haven't actually pressed any of the buttons. This is so exciting. These are the HBFS Generation 3 gamer finger buttons. You get this little strap. I don't know if they give this to everyone, but I got this little strap. I guess I can attach this to my stick or something. The main thing that's exciting about these buttons is that you've got different types of micro switches inside. So they're mechanical keyboard type switches, which means that they're going to feel obviously quite similar to your standard Sanwa buttons. But if you don't like that feel, you can actually get different buttons. I'm actually really excited to see how these feel. It's so cool that you've got these little different designs of people doing dragon punches, kicks. You've got little stickers from Gamer Finger as well, so thanks a lot for them. I'll stick them on something eventually. But let's go ahead and take the sticker off. Oh, and you can see the extra switches that actually come inside this packet. The blue colored switches and the green colored switches. I still don't really know what the differences are between them, but I'll look them up in a minute. So I've, I literally have not had a close look at these. I don't know which one's which. So I want to compare the gray switch with this one, which has a blue switch inside. And apparently you can buy any of these cases that you want with any of these lids and put any switch you want inside. So massively customizable. But all I really want is quiet switches that feel like Sunwas. Let's see how it feels compared to a Sunwa button. First of all, it's really quiet. Wow. And here are the blue ones. Not a lot louder, but... Right about halfway here, if I push it halfway, it, 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 it gives you like a tactile click down and then click. Whereas these ones, these ones don't have a tactile like click. It just goes all the way down smoothly and it, when it stops, it stops. There's no halfway point. So it's not like a DSLR camera where you focus. If you do photography, you know what I'm talking about. So I actually have no interest in these blue halfway point clicky switches. I just want the button to go down and that's all. But I have a very strange feeling that I'm going to like these blue switches. Interesting. Okay, so the, the ones with the click, they actually feel a bit more, I don't know if the word is responsive. I don't know why, but it, these blue ones come up faster. 
I might be making that up. Each switch has different like resistance. I think they've got like 45 gram switches and 55 gram switches and I guess the heavier tension there is on the spring, the more quickly it will come back up. I don't know, that's really fascinating. The next thing that I need to know before trying to put it into the Victrix Pro FS fight stick over here. Which ones of these are buckle type buttons? And as you can see, there's little clips on here. And which ones of these are screw type buttons? Because I am kind of sick and tired of breaking buttons when I take them out. When I modify the stick, there's always that risk that pushing this tab is going to break them. But I think these types, these buttons, as you can see, they've got a little screw ring. You can't really break them easily because you screw them on and you screw them off. So you put this inside the arcade stick and then you fasten it in place using this little sleeve. I can modify to my heart's content without breaking my expensive buttons every time. And by the way, these do cost more than standard, standard, standard Sanwa buttons. Standard Sanwa buttons are like 200 yen, I don't know, $1.50 per button. These are something like five or six or seven dollars per button, depending on whether there's a sale. So significantly more expensive, but you only need eight of them really so it's not like hundreds of dollars expensive you just need to buy eight of these and hopefully once you've bought them you can just stick with these and then when you want to change the switches and the tension you only buy these little micro switches so the next thing i want to do is test the sound wait where is my bag of sanwa buttons Got a bunch of standard Sanwa buttons in this bag. I believe these are the buttons that came with the Victrix Pro originally. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Even before I've put it in the Victrix stick, it's already kind of cracking in my ear. So maybe I'm just really sensitive to Sanwa buttons in any stick. Maybe it's not really the Victrix Pro's fault, but just even before I've plugged it into a stick, it's already kind of making that kind of cracking sound in my ear but I'm trying to turn the gain down on my mic so that you can hear these button volumes by comparison without any leveling of the audio gain. It's quite loud. And let's compare it to the gamer finger button. And I am pushing as hard as I can with these buttons, by the way. It is ridiculously quiet by comparison, wow. And it does not feel spongy. I, f I actually, it felt so natural that I didn't, it didn't even occur to me. <laughs> this is crazy. It felt so natural. I didn't even think to compare it to the Sanwa buttons in terms of feel. They really feel so similar. That's crazy that it can be so quiet and not sacrifice the feel of being a nice solid button. That's nuts. Hold on a second. Let's, let's do them side by side. That's crazy, I can't believe how big a difference that is. That's at least 220% bigger a change in decibel volume than I expected. And that's the gray buttons. Let me just try it with these other colored switches. These are the green switches. Wow. I think red is the most common one that you hear in PC keyboards, isn't it? Decibel level wise, I would say that all the gamer fingers are about the same volume as each other. Oh my God. I am so impressed and I haven't even plugged them into the stick yet. All right, here's what's gonna happen. Since these are screw type buttons, I can put them in and out as much as I want without snapping and breaking them, which is exciting. Let's go ahead and open it up. So in order to compare the, the volume of these buttons side by side, I'm gonna be plugging them into the Victrix Pro FS. As you can see, it has silent Sanwa buttons here, but it has one standard button here. I'm gonna leave the bottom row with the silent buttons and the standard button, and then I'm gonna change the top row to be these quite exciting gamer finger buttons. And I guess once they're in, I can actually just take out the switches and test out the different feels of the blue switches and the brown switches and the green switches. First of all, we need to take this stick off. This is my favorite thing to do, to be able to remove the the, the stick. And by the way, you don't have to buy a Victrix stick to be able to do that. I pretty much have lost the cover that goes over here. No idea where it is. This is my favorite part because I get to play with this clip. I'll just close it again. Ah, oh, that sounds good. Anyway, this is the dangerous part. I need to take these buttons out without destroying them. And that's pretty tricky. Undo the clip here and let's undo the cables. 
And to do so, I might use these pliers. Sometimes people say, why do people make such a big deal of having easy access to the buttons? And having a, a flippy cover here, and it's like, well, this is why. So I've managed to take all of the cables off, which I'll put off to the side, and now we just need to get these metal grey buttons out. Laces out! I'm really nervous because I like these gold buttons, I don't want to break them. I mean, I'm pleasantly surprised, that one, that one was less stressful, and I didn't break it. Gamer finger? Silent button. Very similar, very similar in volume, but completely different in feel. This gets spongy earlier. This one, it feels like a hard stop that doesn't hurt. It's very difficult to explain. They both have a soft touch, but this is the one that feels spongy. So we're taking this one out and putting this one in. And flip it over, and as you can see now, I have four holes in the top row where I'm going to put the gamer finger buttons. I'm going to put the first red one here. That's gone in perfectly, basically because it doesn't have buckles. It doesn't need to like click itself in place. And now on the opposite side, we need to keep it in place with this. Hopefully we're not going to run into any issues because there are some sticks where these screw mounts get in the way and that looks nice and solid. So what I was going to ask you is which of these colours should I put in because you've got grey, red, blue, green and brown but I've decided what I'd actually like to do is just put them all in. First of all I need to know how to open this button up. If I just push up on the red part will it just come off? Time to ask the internet. Alright according to the Gamer Finger video which I found on the internet. You put a screwdriver in here and you twist it. So I'm gonna try and jab this in here and twist it. It said put it in and then twist. Ooh, it works. Okay, sweet. Okay, that was kind of, I was kind of scared I was gonna break it. I managed to take the red cap off. So the gamer fingers actually look like this on the inside and the micro switches look like this, but they go into here into these little holes and then on this side they become the familiar metal prongs that you're used to in your arcade sticks. That's what's going to plug into these cables here. Let's put the case somewhere else and I'm going to pull the red cover off. Now we can see that on the inside it's just this standard, I think they call them speed silver and they feel really nice but we're going to replace it with these blue switches here. So I'm going to put in a blue switch and I believe there's only one way this can go in. Okay, and now let's put the cover on top. Is this correct? And just close it like so. Ta-da! And now it is a blue switch. That's exciting. Just take this plastic off. It's gonna be red in color just like the others, but it's actually got a blue Cherry MX switch inside. No issues with spacing yet. I was worried that maybe it wouldn't fit into the chassis properly, but Got no issues so far. Now we're going to replace the inside of another red switch, but we're going to put it in a different color. Twist. Pop it out. Cherry MX Red. This is way less stressful than I thought it was going to be. Then put the cover back on. Oh wow. Having, having screw in type buttons is so much less stressful than having the buckle type. Take off the buckle. We're going to replace it with this Cherry MX Brown. So I'm going to pull the original switch out, put the brown switch inside, and then put the cover back on. Slide this into top position here, like so. So easy! I can't believe how easy this is. Screw that in place. So I just need to remove one more button. I get a real kick out of this. Customization is like my favorite thing to do. Being able to customize this is like pretty much the reason I, I play fighting games. So I've taken out another silent button. It's actually this one here. Screw the cap off. Put the screwdriver back in, pluck this key switch out, lasers out! Get the old switch out, take the speed silver off here and we're going to replace it with green. I don't have any idea how heavy that is. Plug that in here, that clicks in place and then I'm going to put the yellow, plug that in there. The colors Duke, the colors! Slide that in place. I'm a screw type convert, I'm all about the screws. Brilliant, so we've got all the buttons in place as you can see right here. I can't tell you how excited I am about having silent buttons that are not spongy. I don't know if you can actually change the Cherry MX switches without taking them out of the chassis first, but that would be really nice and really convenient if you could. Plug this back in here, 
satisfying click, you know that's in. I'll give you the old close a Ah, I'll put the lever back on. This is the Salma standard button. And these are the gamer finger buttons. Ooh. Identical. All right, so one thing I've noticed is that the padding of the silent buttons actually gives it slightly more of low end frequency compared to the gamer fingers. Because there's a much smaller surface area of impact, essentially all you're really hearing is plastic pushing down a Cherry MX switch. Since that's pretty much the only sound, the only two things that are impacting, it's only high frequency content and I could do an EQ and check it later, but I'm pretty sure this one resonates more with the body of the stick. So even more quiet than some... What? Hang on a second. You can hear it, can't you? It's like thud, 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 click, 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 thud, thud, thud. It's definitely higher frequency content, which helps because the resonant frequency of this Victrix stick, it's got a lot of resonant frequencies in here. It will amplify a lot of things. And if you can get as l many of those frequencies out of the button as possible, you end up with only this nice quiet sort of high end, not high frequency, mid range click. <laughs> that is so nice. Obviously it is not as hard to stop as the original Sanwa buttons. Ooh. Like that is a very sharp plastic on plastic stop. This is a very, it's a very solid, but more fist on palm sound. And this is a very soft, this is a very soft like palm on palm or something even softer, like palm on palm on muscle. Well, I suppose there's no muscles, so I can't really show you that. You know what I mean. Smack, smack, smack. That's how that's how I would describe it. It's like thud, 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 click, click, click. Smack, smack, smack. All right, so what were the colors that I installed again? I'm now going to test the feel of the buttons. We've got silver here. We've got blue. Woo. It does feel a bit more like a keyboard. But it has, it has, it has that click. Wow, that's crazy. <sighs> that's crazy. It feels like I'm operating machinery. You can also hear the slight difference in sound as well. And the next one we have here is red. Red also does not have a click. So red and silver don't have little tactile feedbacks. I can't tell the difference. I can't wait to look this all up and have it all displayed on screen. That's gonna be hilarious. I'll be like, oh, I should have just read it first. And the next one here is brown, is it? Okay. This is even heavier. Light, medium, heavy. Oh wow, it's louder as well. I don't know if the switch is louder or maybe just this portion of the Victrix is a bit louder. Obviously nothing in comparison to the Sanwa. That's really loud. Last but not least, we got the green one. Oh wow. I don't like that. This one also has a tactile click, but the blue one seems to like come up more quickly. The green one side like goes down and then kind of takes its time to come back up. I don't like the feel of that. I would buy only these silver switches or the blue switches. The blue ones remind me of the Razer Pantera Evo, which I'm gonna go and grab for you right now, just so you can see. I'm pretty sure that the Razer Pantera Evo doesn't have a click. Yeah, it doesn't have a click, but it's nice and responsive trying to figure out which one of these gamer finger buttons feels the most similar. Let's do a side-by-side -side test and find out. Oh, actually, you know what? Maybe that's why these are higher tension. Maybe the higher tension heaviness of these makes them come up more quickly. The red ones feel a bit sluggish. These speed silver switches, these do feel the closest to the Pantera mechanical switches, which I love. I really love the mechanical switches in the Pantera Evo. So maybe I should just stick with the silvers for now. And this greens. Ooh. 
I just don't like the click. I just don't like the click in the green ones. So anyway, if you're looking for some really nice buttons, I'm a big fan of the ones that are built in directly to the Pantera Evo. The only issue, and the reason why it's difficult to suggest that you get the Pantera Evo buttons is because you can't actually buy them. You need to buy the Pantera Evo to get those eight buttons. And then I don't know how to buy extra ones. Maybe in the future, they're planning on releasing separate buttons that you can buy. But for now, the easiest thing to buy are these standard Cherry MX switches with the standard colors that everyone knows and loves. This is honestly the first time in like my whole life that I've ever tried out the different colors. We're actually gonna try it in game and we're gonna find out which of these buttons I prefer and I'm, which one I'm gonna put in all of here. So even before we've plugged it in and tried it, it's already a massive resounding success in terms of sound because listen, the silent buttons and the gamer finger buttons, they're actually kind of similar in feel. So let's go ahead and try it. Wow, they are fast as well. Speed Silver living up to its name. Now we're going to try the blue buttons. Aha! That's going to take some getting used to because it's got that click. Can you hear it? Now that's fascinating. I've just discovered something really interesting. Because there's two different varieties of buttons, there's the button that don't have the click inside, and the ones that go click, click, click. And what happens is that tactile click happens before you go the full throw distance, before you come to a hard stop. And that means that when you do really light button presses, so you want to play really, really lightly, not hurt your fingers at all, then you can still get the click. Normally, you push the button all the way down to get that satisfying stopping feeling, but when you press it with the clicking buttons like this, you get the satisfaction of the click. You get the tactile feedback of the click. You know that the button has actuated without actually doing the full smackdown all the way of the hard stop. Oh man, I could be converted to these blue switches. I think I am gonna replace them with all the blue switches, but just in case, let's just check how the other ones feel. Now I've got the red ones as well. I'm trying to do this with my eyes closed as well. The red ones just feel a little heavier, but almost exactly the same. It's honestly very, very difficult to feel any difference between silver and red. And the brown ones? Brown just feels really heavy. It feels heavier. Sounds heavier. Feels good, sounds good. I cannot, I cannot really think of a good reason why I'd want the brown switches. They feel a little heavier, but for not real, there's no real benefit I can, I can see right now. But then again, I've tested it for like five minutes, so I don't know. And last but not least, let's try these green switches. How, here's how I feel about the green switches. Yes, they do have the click. They have that tactile click, but because they're light, the blue ones, the blue ones feel more solid. Like they're coming up quickly, and they feel more responsive, but I think that's just speed. But with the green ones, I feel like the button isn't coming up as quickly, it's kind of taking its time. So it doesn't feel as responsive. It's like, it's like push down and then like coming up whenever it feels like it. For me, right now, I think the options are speed silver for that super standard feel. And now this new feel, which I've never experienced, which is the blue clicky ones, which just has that, has a real nice, satisfying, well, the but I think the word I'm looking for is reassuring. It is that reassuring you have definitely actuated the button. So even if you're the type of person that leaves your fingers on the buttons like so, and you just, you actuate them by just pressing them, because I have seen people doing this, especially beginners. When I first see beginner players, they'll often rest their fingers on the, on the buttons and then just press them like this. They just want to press it and they want that satisfying click. And if you do it like this, you don't have a lot of velocity from coming up high like so, then you need that satisfying click or you would appreciate that satisfying click. But even for me, having my hand floating above here, I still like the satisfying click here because I double tap. And when you double tap, you get that click, 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 click feel. Even though I don't have to go all the way down and slam the button all the way down, hard stop. Now that I've decided that I want the blue ones, let's do blue compared to silent. It just feels lighter. It feels, it feels light and fast. Light and fast. I love these blue ones. 
And I'll say, you know what's really weird as well? Is that the Sunless Silence actually hurt a bit more, and I think that might be a habit. Just for some context, I feel like because the throw distance might be a bit shorter, because of that foam pad, meaning the button doesn't go all the way down, it kind of comes here and stops because there's a foam pad in between. I feel like my fingers hurt because they can't travel the full distance down, because I'm, they're stopping earlier. Because it's stopping earlier, I I'm feeling more impact on the silent buttons, but I'm feeling less impact from the mechanical switches, because I'm getting that tactile feedback without the hard stop. So this has been a resounding success for me. Wow! The silent buttons gave me a lot of impact. They felt, they felt solid enough, but they were spongy and they stopped early, so they hurt a bit more. But also, they're really quiet. Quieter than Sanwa silent buttons. And I don't know how that's going to compare to Sanwa silent generation two, which has not been released yet. But until that point, we only have generation one. And by the way, in Japan, they don't sell the foam washers on their own anymore, the foam pads. You have to buy these buttons and you have to take the foam pad out of one button and put them into a separate one. Phenomenal. And just for one last sound comparison, let's go speed gray, silent, standard. It's a complete world of difference. Now let's try the blue ones. Let's try it with double tapping as well. has literally exploded. Well, there you have it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video for the testing of the Gamer Finger Buttons. I think they're a Taiwanese company and I believe that they ship worldwide. You get all sorts of different colors. They're very tasteful because they've come in these white surround or black surround or clear surround. And that's the ones, that's the color formation I've gone for is these clear surrounds. What's really exciting is the customizable aspect of them. Actually, if I didn't go for these color buttons, I was very tempted to go for the smoke screen covers, which allow you to insert artwork into the buttons. You could have a laser artwork etched into your Victrix Pro FS, and you could also have artwork printed on little inserts, which you put under these caps. You have to get separate different types of caps, but you could put artwork inside blows my mind but this is the real the real reason why today has been a massive success is that I have been looking for a way to make the Victrix Pro the perfect stick for me and because it was too loud with that loud button press I was like what a shame because I really like every aspect of everything else about the stick that I would want to make it my big my, my big stick I want to make it my main stick but I can't because it's too loud and this got me one step closer the silent summer buttons and now I have reached perfection. It's these blue, it's these blue switches. I'm all over it. So once again, thank you very much to Victrix Pro for supplying this stick for me so that I could go through testing it and show you everything I, you need to know about the stick. Thanks very much to Gamer Finger who provided these buttons for this video so that I could test them for you and just see how they feel. In fact, I don't even think Gamer Finger said make a video. I think they said, do you just want to try some buttons? Here they are, they're in the video now. My favorites, even though we had silver, blue, red, brown, and green, my favorites were these blue ones. I'm on, I'm a convert, who knows, maybe by next week I'll have switched back to the silvers, but for now, they're quiet, they feel good, and they look cool, and they're quiet. Discovering that I can't double tap with my left hand right now. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, share the links and all that great stuff. I'll see you in the next Nihongo Gamer stream video. And or if you'd love to talk about gear, we have a room just for talking about gear and arcade sticks in the Nihongo Gamer Discord. There's a link in the description below. And you can also follow me on Twitter. Thanks very much for joining me for this. I'm, I finally found my perfect setup. So thank you very much. See you in the next time. See you in the next time, see you in the next video.